Hey YouTubers and welcome back to Tony the Technician channel and today we're just going to be going into a short video on the Ulsa Tools 3 pound dead blow. I'll be going over the pros to a dead blow compared to some other hammers, what it's good for, the specs and features of this and pricing and all of that. And then I'm going to be trying to do like a slow-mo video of using a dead blow compared to a couple other different style hammers to show the pros of using this in certain situations. So this is what it's going to come packaged in. I'll have this link down in the description for you guys underneath the tools link. The part number is going to be 1274. Here's the hammer itself. It's got a steel shot head inside. You're going to have a lot of steel pellets or BBs and you'll be able to hear that. Pretty fine. Uh, depending on the dead blow that you get, cheaper ones tend to have a little bit larger pellet size and it's not as good at rebound resistance. Or you'll have a cheaper shell which tends to crack or break easier. When it comes to a dead blow, if you find yourself needing one and you feel like you're going to use it fairly often, I do suggest picking one up that is either, if you do want to go the cheap route, extremely easy to replace by warranty for free or get yourself a good quality one and uh, make sure that it's less likely to break than the cheaper ones. So it's got the steel shot for rebound resistance. It's got a polyurethane head on it. It's got some nice molding to it. It's very clean. They did a really good job on it. No hard line from the mold or anything like that. Very smooth, textured finish. And like I stated, it is a three pound dead blow hammer. So it is a little bit larger. On the inside, it's got a steel construction, all steel construction that holds the pellets or BBs inside or the steel shot inside. And then it's got a solid steel shaft that runs down the handle. And then at the bottom of the handle, instead of having like your cheaper dead blows, they'll have a square cut handle and it's got real sharp corners to it or it'll be rounded but it's still the same material as this and it if it's not textured at the bottom it can be extremely slippery so like this hammer if it was this texture down below i would end up throwing this thing across the shop on accident because this even though it is lightly textured it is still extremely slippery so i am really glad that it is a rounded handle plus it's a rubberized diamond grip so you can see that there and it is very comfortable and being rubber, it's got a lot better grip than this polyurethane. So that is a nice touch as well. Other than that, this hammer is made in Taiwan and it is going to run around $40. Your cheaper ones are going to run anywhere from $8 to $25. And then when you get into your better quality ones, you're looking anywhere from $30 to $60. So this one falls right in the higher quality range for pricing. And I will say with the rubberized grip and the higher end polyurethane molding it is a higher quality than your cheaper eight dollar to twenty dollar uh, dead blows so where a dead blow comes in handy is when you're working with something that you really need to move but you're not trying to damage that item or whatever you're working on and you're not trying to have a lot of rebound and that's where the steel shot really comes in handy. Two of the most popular hammers used today, I would say, especially in the automotive field, is a dead blow and a dead blow ball peen hammer. Uh, two of my most commonly used hammers. Besides that, it would be my rubber mallet. It does carry the Ulsa Tools 100% satisfaction guarantee with limited lifetime warranty. So basically, if you're not satisfied with its performance, you call them and they guarantee to make it right for you. So that's basically their warranty. I haven't had to, I own probably a handful of Ulsa tools, some wrenches, uh, a couple organizers, hammer, a socket organizer, and a couple other smaller things. And I haven't had to really warranty any of them. Besides the wrenches, this is the first tool that's not like an organizer or something that just holds tools. Uh, so really this is one of the only items besides the wrench that I would ever find myself possibly needing the warranty for. So personally, I haven't used the Ulsa Tools warranty, but if I ever do, I will let you guys know how that process is. As far as the dimensions, it's going to be 14 and a half inches long, five inches wide up here at the head, and then here it is going to be roughly two and three eighths inches wide across the face. That's it basically as far as the information. So here 
I have actually had a lot of different dead blows in the past. I had this one for roughly five years. Don't use it a whole lot, it's here at home. I got this in a cheap five piece hammer set for like $40 a long time ago. It's a grip set. They don't even make the set anymore. I think they sell a lot of them individually. But this is just a few of the hammers from the set. I have a sledge and a double face hammer as well. As far as this, the great thing about a dead blow is you have a lot less rebound than a rubber mallet. A rubber mallet's great for not damaging items and still moving items, but you still get quite a bit of rebound with this because it is strictly all rubber up here. And then with a ball peen, you can really uh, do some damage for sure. So when trying not to damage something, that's where something like these hammers come in handy. And then this being in the set, it does have a larger steel shot in it. You can physically feel that the shot is bigger and there's not as much. Obviously this one is smaller. This is a one pound compared to a three pound, but the material is a lot cheaper. The molding is a lot cheaper. You can just tell it's a lot thinner. Uh, I can actually move the, or I can twist the handle at the bottom. Not that you can probably pick that up in the video, but it was an extremely cheap set. Now for at home in the last five years, the set has done great. Now, do I believe this grip set would hold up in the professional field? Not likely, probably after a few months to a year, this guy is definitely gonna be demolished. This guy is gonna be chunked up pretty bad. Uh, the other three hammers would be just fine, but these two I don't think would do so well long-term in the professional field. This I think would do just fine. This feels of good quality and being three pounds, it's got some good weight to it. Approximately, uh, you know, I'd probably say around three pounds. So what I'm gonna do next is just kind of try and do a slow motion video of this ball peen hammer dropping from either a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle so you can see the rebound of it then i'll do the rubber mallet same angle and then we'll drop the also tools hammer just so you can kind of see the rebound or the movement of the hammer when it strikes a surface i'll try and slow that down so you guys can see that but if you guys enjoy this video please make sure to hit that thumbs up leave a comment down below of your guys thoughts or what brand deblo you guys went with or if you're considering one, keep in mind this will be linked down in the description as well as many other tools. I have quite a few other dead blows. I carry a Matco dead blow at work. I have this one for home. I also have the new Tecton USA made one at home. So this one being around $40 falls in the higher price range, but we're gonna see how it does over time and I'll keep you guys updated in the future. But if you guys haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and let's see how this rebound video goes.